Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to this evening's worship. Our entry hymn, 344, 348, 348, the Church's One Foundation. 348. Your holy 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one more, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we have the Sunday school. Um, so the young children, we're going to go with Auntie Camille, who is in the back and they go around.
Gradual sum, 91, take an end and plus 1. See the opportunity. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall deliver you from the snares of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence.
form of expectation when the budget is going to be read that some taxes is going to be removed or something was going to be lowered and we miss that we are in a larger pot with other people and what happens here is really affected by what happens elsewhere. And there's no difference between Lazarus and the rich man. Now if we examine the story, we would see something very phenomenal happening here. That when the story begins, we begin knowing that the rich man is extremely rich. He's not just your neighborhood rich person. He's not even the, the, the prime minister kind of rich person. He is royalty rich. How do we know he's royalty rich? Because it says that he was dressed in purple and fine linen. And in the time of Jesus, only the extremely rich could afford dyed cloth. Mainly kings or some kind of governor would have had something purple. So here it is. Jesus is talking about the extremely rich and how the extremely rich treat the poor. That's what the story is. So instead of seeing the opportunity to engage with those who do not have, they don't see them at all. So Lazarus is there. How far is he from the rich man? He's not far at all, right? Perhaps just outside his house. The scraps falling from his table is not a literal table, he's not just under the table. But he's close enough that the rich man ought to know that he's there, but pays him no mind. And they both happen to die at the same time. Now, the story gets even more interesting from there. Because the poor man has no one ready to bury him. So Jesus doesn't say that the, the poor man was buried, but rather that he was taken by the angels and he goes to be with Father Abraham. In other words, no one even does the duty of burying this man who is being licked by dogs. Another thing to tell you that they would have scorned him even more because Jews did not associate with dogs. They didn't do that. But in his death, he becomes rich. And the rich man who has the fanfare, he is buried. And sometimes we miss that in the story now. That Jesus said he was buried. In other words, he had everything as like a state funeral. Everything was big and pomp and glory. And we, we should know what I'm talking about because the Queen's burial just happened. So you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, you can line the streets and throw flowers and, and, and everything else. But all these things are earthly. They have nothing to do with God. But judgment comes at the end. And so the rich man goes down after all the fanfare. He is in Hades, in torment. He's no longer rich. He's not, no longer clothed in anything that is fine. Nothing luxurious. He looks up and for the first time he acknowledges that he knows who the poor man is. He knows the poor man. Don't we know the poor in our society? Don't we know the poor countries in the world? Don't we know those who are struggling? But many times we turn a blind eye because our needs and our wants are more important than those who have no one to speak for them. Yeah? So then he looks up and he sees Father Abraham and he says, Tell Lazarus, still want to give commands, right? Tell Lazarus to dip his finger in some water and rest it on my tongue. For I am in what? In agony in this place. In agony. I want us to think for a moment, because I'm sure most of us have been very thirsty before. Yes? And when you are very, very thirsty, what would a drop of water in your tongue do? What would it do? 
Now think now of the torment for someone to, to even consider that one drop of water is some kind of reprieve for them in agony. That's how bad it is, you know. And, and then Abraham intervenes and says, but no. In life, you enjoy all the good things that there was. Yeah? Speaking again to that royal kind of attitude, that, that sense of having. In life, you enjoy all the good things. And then he says, but Lazarus, in life, he had to endure all the evil things. In other words, you could have stepped in and changed Lazarus' life. You could have been a blessing to Lazarus instead of thinking that what you have is only for yourself. That's the, the part of the story here. That true treasure is not on earth, but in the actions of doing goodness and kindness that is recognized by God. For God blesses us with wealth so that we may bless other people. And there was a time when Trinidad used to do that, Trinidad and Tobago, until somebody came and said, Trinidad is not the ATM of the Caribbean. Memory shallow, do you care about that? Make it one, get up with it, I'm not making that up. I'm not making that up. Last week we, we heard the story about the dishonest manager and how he was praised for when he went and he reduced the debts of everybody else so that when the time came for him to be fired, he could find a home there. We have to learn to live with our neighbors in peace. If we want to outdo our neighbors in anything, it should be outdoing them in good works, in kindness. That's what we should really strive for. Outdo them in being a good neighbor. If your neighbor gives you a bread, you should give them two bread the next week. Yeah? Sometimes we take the bread and we take uh, and we throw it in the bin because we're so convinced that somebody ought to do us evil that they put something in the bread. Eh? Not so? Yes. We have become people that are so bitter and angry and, and living with hurt that we cannot see goodness in other people. When anyone is kind to us, it means that they're looking for something. Isn't that our society today? Yeah? In a society that is full of kickbacks and all other kinds of things. Free action protocol, letter from this one and that one. This is who we have become. We have become people who are building a highway to hell because we don't want to take the stairs to heaven yeah this is not me you know because everybody could go and line up around the savannah they could go and cause more traffic on monday they could go and beat drums and say we want money right now and if the government came out and said we're sending all your home also right now. There's not only one side could sing it. Both sides could sing. The love of money. Not liking it, huh? Not having it. That's not what the scripture says. It doesn't say if you have money, if you like money. It says, if you love money, the love of money is what? The root of all evil. The love of it. And we are a country that loves money. That we have play with what? Four times a day now? Four times? It's 10 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock. Well, three times. 
taking people's lives. When we could be happy with 400 plus murders, while we continue to make the divide larger and larger, we are the cause of our own downfall. We don't like to hear these things when we come to church, right? They all want to hear us, amen and hallelujah, but the church is to preach the truth. It is to bring us back into a place of understanding our prophetic nature in society. The church is where we're supposed to get cuss from people outside. The church is not a place where people on the outside should praise us because if we are being praised, it means that we are doing something wrong ourselves. So let us not get blinded to those things. There are many sweet talkers out there about the church. But whenever things go bad, it is the church that they call first. The church not doing its job. What is the job of the church? To speak the truth. To speak the truth to those in high office and whatever low office it has. Right? To speak the truth whether we want to hear it or we don't want to hear it. To speak the truth to the ten or to speak the truth to the ten thousand. That is the job of the church. To call its hearers to repentance. To look and say, all this time that you rested and reflected, I hope that when you call the police or you need medical attention, that these people are also not resting and reflecting at that time. Now I'm not saying that you should not value people. You see, when you put yourself higher than others, we will always have a problem. But I always say that the people who need to be feared the most are oftentimes feared the least. For how many of us could go a week with all the garbage collectors coming to our streets and our communities? A week. Are they not people? Are they not deserving of higher wages for that kind of job which is very dangerous? Yeah? The time will come when we may run out of money. The time will come like Venezuela or like Haiti. And I'm not calling to go out far away, you realize I'm not saying Yemen and Iraq and those kind of things. These places are very close by. You may want to sell your children for a loaf of bread. Let us not let greed get the better of us. Learn to be content. As Paul wrote to Timothy, be content with what you have today. Tomorrow God will give us a, a better blessing. But learn to be happy with what you have right now. Yeah? Tomorrow may never come. So why live with this agony in your own mind of having something that you do not have and missing the beauty of the things that you do have? For there are many people who would gladly trade places with any of those teachers or anybody asking for more money because they have none. They can't get employment. Yeah? Plain fool. And so it's time for us to rethink. And again I, I repeat, this has nothing to do with my me saying that they are not worth this. Hill. But how are we going to sustain 
would you think you're with in a society that doesn't have the money to pay it? So when the vulnerable become more vulnerable, when hunger hits those who have run out to the last end of their rope, what do you think is going to happen? It is the explosion waiting to happen. So let us help those that we can help. Let us be the church of God and not the church of man. Let us be the body of Christ. Let us be the change that we want to see. Let us be the prophetic voice in our home, in our communities, in our schools, in our workplaces. Do not shun from your responsibility as a Christian. Do not shun from your responsibility because you're afraid that when you say or speak the truth, that people will not like you. If they don't like you for speaking the truth, then they don't like you at all. Okay? So always remember that. Anybody who doesn't like you because you're talking shippiness all the time should not be in your life. Okay? So let Lazarus be our guide. Let Abraham watch over us. And let the Holy Spirit build this temple within us so that the Father and the Son can find a home eternally in us because our heart and our treasure is already in heaven. Amen. Amen. So we stand to profess our faith in God calls us to recognize the beauty in creation, the wonderful love that can be found in each and every individual. As we say the words of the Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen or unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal in the God of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God, true God, be God, not me, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Father's Pilate. He suffered and died in his death. And the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. For the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. And so today we use intercession form C, page 108. So we pray, we remember the leaders of the church. Pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Pray for Howard, the Archbishop of our province. Pray, pray for poor our bishop. Pray for God's healing upon his wife Dawn. We pray for retired Bishop Abdullah. We pray for the repose of the soul of his wife Mariko, who was laid to rest earlier today. We also pray for retired Diocese and Bishop Royal and Pride. We thank God for their mission and ministry. They have served this diocese and continue to serve in their capacity. Lord, in your love, yeah. we pray for the repose of the soul of Reverend Edwina Peters. We ask you, O oh Lord, to draw her and all the faithful departed into the light of your presence. Lord, in your love, yeah. we pray for the 
many upheavals within our society at this time. Pray for quelling crime and violence. Pray for an end to school violence. We ask the Lord to raise up good role models for our children at this time. Pray especially for the incredibly young that they may inherit the land that they can be proud to call their home. Lord in your love. We continue with intercession from sea. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishops, and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love and be followed without fault of the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the victims of hunger, fear, justice and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves, Lord, confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of Him, who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray tonight for those who receive national awards. We pray that as they are recognized for their duty, Pray that they will continue to be humble in their offerings of their skill, their time and talent. Pray, Almighty God, for the blessings upon our President, our Prime Minister, and the Leader of the Opposition. Lord, in your name. Let us say together. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us, and all who turn to you for us. For you are gracious, O Lord of God. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So let us turn to the Act of Penitence, page 123. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Using form B, let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all ways, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For the sea of the greeting of peace, the kingdom of God is justice, peace and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. 
let us offer each other an appropriate sign of Uh, our offertory hymn, 409-409, Be Thou My Vision.
Because on this most glorious day a triple light was given, on the first day of creation, you brought light and life into being. On the first day for our salvation, you raised your son victorious over death, and on this day, you gave your holy and life-giving spirit to your church. Therefore, we praise you. Joining our voices with angels and our angels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Form C on page 137. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. For this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of time. Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By you, and with you, and in you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This for the breaking of the bread. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls and weakness have been satisfied, and we will sing that song of grace. 
sisters and brothers, we invite you to come to receive the blessed sacrament. Please understand that you must sanitize your hands first. The sacrament will be given by intention. So as you are asked to come forward, please extend your hand fully to the first marker. Then go to the left or to the right. There, remove your mask. Consume the sacrament. Put your mask back on. And then return to your seats. Please refrain from pulling your mask out on the first marker here. Thank you for your cooperation and understanding.
and for the decoration of the church. So please, if you are dealing with a stall, we invite you to come and do the setup from Saturday, from the church Saturday as well, so that Sunday morning you are free to continue with whatever stall activity you may have. So you would have already come to church this Saturday evening. All right? The Mother's Union in the Northwest region is hosting a barbecue in aid of the Mother's Union Children's Home on the 7th of October. Tickets are at $50 for chicken and $60 for fish. The collection point is at Holy Savior, but I think Ms. Uteri Sylvester, who is the head of the Mother's Union here, will probably collect if you would like to do so. So please contact Uteri Sylvester. I guess you can get a number from the office as well. Bible study continues on Mondays at 5, and the prayer group will meet on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Please note also that this coming Wednesday, there will be no evening prayer being streamed from St. Michael at All Angels. This coming Wednesday, which will be the 28th of September, we will be hosting a evening prayer service to commemorate the 51st anniversary and the Feast of Title on the Thursday evening, so 6 p.m. here at the church, we will have an in-person, uh, somewhat solemn even song, all right? So we invite you to come to that service as well in recognition of the parish turning 51 years and ending our year of Jubilee on that day, all right? So confirmation classes are ongoing on Saturdays, except today being a public holiday, uh, but every Saturday moving forward from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Right now, training to be part of the Silver's Guild is also a mandatory part of the confirmation process, okay? Um, the collection for Jasmine is an ongoing one, as we also, so the I said Jasmine and Alexa came up, so sorry about that. So please be reminded that we are still trying to raise funds for the repairs to the call as well. Alright? And for insurance purposes. So the second collection is ongoing so that we'll be able to pay our insurance at in the month of November. Just a reminder that the insurance is $50,000 and we must come up with every year to pay for that. Alright? So thank you very much in that way. Before we leave, so something to say? So we have the treasurer coming to say something. Good evening all. I just wanted to just add a little more about the, the harvest. We hope that you would come up and support. We are looking very hard to try to make it a very good day on that of the various sports and hope that you will be able to bring in food and provision. We fruit, vegetables and provision to decorate the church as we work here on Friday because um, Mrs. Weston will be decorating the church their time on Friday. Hmm? Their time on Friday. But during it between between 10 and 3. Between 10 and 3, because she'll be decorating the church on Saturday. So you can come to the office and let us know and we will have the things placed over here. Um, also, I just wanted to let you know the, the menu for the lunch. We have a vegetarian option, which will be uh, macaroni pie, vegetable rice, salad with a plantain salad. And then the meat options are chicken or fish with provision pie, carrot rice, and um, provision pie. Okay, so I will take orders for lunch. You can call the office as well and order the lunch for Sunday. And I can take orders this evening if you wish to place orders with me. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to your participation. This is our first in person now. This is since 2019. Yes. So we really want people to come out and make it a very memorable event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Today is Republic Day, so we.
before we have the recession and we will stand to sing the national anthem of Trinidad and Tobago. Lord, from the love of liberty in the past of